What's up YouTube, Dell here from Zephyr War Games, and today I am bringing you an update to Draco Slayers. That's right ladies and gentlemen, pen best deck. Well it might now be again with these guys. This deck is absolutely insane, a lot of fun to play as well. And as a disclaimer, I have tried to avoid playing any of the Bicycles and of course uh, Fenrir's for the pure fact that I've tried to keep it more pendulum focused and tried to keep the cost down where it's all possible. Where there are cards that are a little bit expensive, I will explain some cheaper alternatives for you and kind of go from there. With all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more upcoming content. I will do a combo at the end or I'll put it in a separate video uh, depending on how long this one goes for so you can see everything in its glory. With all of that out of the way, let's dive head first into the profile. So we start off with probably the best card, which if it was a secret, it would have been a heck of a lot more expensive than it is right now, and that is Triple Majesty. So this is the most important card, and alongside Majesty, I'm just going to put out the Triple Bambuku. Um, this is obviously the expensive card right now because it's only had like two prints. I think it had like Mega Pack, and it had its original print as well. But the idea is that of your normal summons, which you only play two of, Bambuku and um, Skullcrabat Joker, this one will search out the Majesty, and because Majesty is so important, it's why you kind of want to be able to get technically six copies of her. Given one as well, Bambuku has the built-in protection of being unable to be targeted, uh, which is really, really important. So, why is Majesty so important? Well, quite simply, if you have a Draco Slayer or Magic Specs card in your other Pendulum Zone, you get to add a Draco Slayer Pendulum Monster with a different original name that that card in your deck to your hand. Then you get to destroy it one card in your Pendulum Zone. Now, it's a you can destroy, so you don't have to. Um, if you have got Ignis, you do want to be destroying it because you'll get additional pluses, and that is all part of the combo at the end. On top of that as well, it does have a quick effect to be discarded. For the rest of this turn, your opponent cannot target Draco Slayer monsters you control with card effects, and they can't be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, which is quite important, and a lot of people will forget about that effect. On top of that, if it wasn't enough, if it is special summoned by the effect of a Draco Slayer card or Pendulum Summoned, you get to add any field spell in the game from the deck to the hand and then discard one card. So yes, it was able to search out Mystic Mine. Now it can search out Secret Village of the Spellcasters or Necro Valley, both incredibly powerful field spells for the upcoming format or the current format that we are in. Moving on to the next one, we play Triple Dynamite Knight. And because, again, Dynamite Knight is quite important, we are playing at two Dynamis Charge. Arguably, this could be cut down to one, and that's where space starts opening up for the Fenrirs and the Bicycle plays, if you want to. Moving on to the least important one, and that is, of course, Ignis Phoenix. Now, by least important, what I mean by that is all of its effects require another card to do something. So, we'll take you through Dynamite Knight first, and why this is so important is you get to target a Draco Slayer or Dynamis card in your other Pendulum Zone and Special Summon it. That's its Scales effect. Then its Monster effect is always treated as a Dynamis card, which is why Charge works. And, if it is tributed, you get to add a face-up Draco Slayer or Dynamis Pendulum Monster from your extra deck to the hand, except himself. Now, this is very important for one of the monsters in the extra deck, so that when we show it off later on, you'll be like, ah, oh, that makes sense. This guy right here actually makes you tribute the materials, which, funnily enough, will trigger that, which is great. Uh, and then the Ignis Heat, again, this is why it requires other cards to do stuff. It's during the main phase, you get to shuffle a face-up Pendulum Monster from your extra deck into the deck, and then add a non-Pendulum Draco Slayer or Ignite Monster. So, you're not going to be doing that, because you don't play a non-Pendulum Draco Slayer or Ignite Monster in the main deck, unless you want to change it up, and you can do. It's always treated as an Ignite card, it is a warrior, so it can be searched with Rotar. If this card on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you get to special on a Draco Slayer or Ignite Monster from the deck, except itself. And if you do, it is treated as a tuner. So why is that so important? Well, I already explained to you the effect of Majesty, how she will make you or allow you to destroy one card in the field. So having these in the scales, not only will you get the ability to search, you'll also get the ability to pop and then special summon. So that's how you get your monsters on the board without even conducting a normal summon at some points. But on the other times as well, you might need to conduct your normal summon to get everything going the way you need to. Carrying on the Draco Slayer cards, of course, we are playing at Triple Luster, and I'm going to call him his brother in the form of Double Master. So this is why this deck is so, so good, because you've got this whole host of brand new Draco Slayers, plus the good old faithful Draco Slayers themselves, and this Mac Daddy Ignista as well, which we will show you more towards the end. These are obviously the older cards, you should all know what they do. This one lets you pop another card in your scale and then add a second copy or a third copy of that particular card. And this one lets you just clear out your other Pendulum Zone. 
Obviously, it has a bit more synergy if you were to play hardcore Pendulum Magicians, um, but we're only playing a very small Pendulum engine in this deck anyway. To help you search out those Draco Slayers as they are Dragons, we are playing Triple Revolution. So, like I said, Luster is the one you want to be going to more times than not. That's why you're maxing out on this guy, and if that wasn't enough, this guy can also bring back Ignista from the Graveyard. It can, as well, also bring back the Dynamite Knight as well, I believe. Um, so keep that in mind. This card is absolutely nuts for the deck, um, and it's very, very important, because not only can it search you your consistency plays, but it can also revive you your boss monsters, which is mental and beautiful all in the same turn. Moving on to the Pendulum Magicians. Now, this is just a personal preference. So this is where the Bi-Steals come in, so the Triple Magnamu and the one or two Druid Swarms and the Fenris. So I've gone with Triple Harmonizer, Double Purple Poison, and the one Celestial Magician. Now, arguably, you could put Purple Poison down to one if you want to, but the idea is that your Harmonizers are dead if you don't have a Magician left in the deck. The other thing as well is because we're not playing a um, level 2, you don't want to be putting any of these into the scales. That's all for the Draco Slayers to get your searches, your pops, uh, and that's where Monkey Ball comes into play and everything else like that. So you are going to want to be having this hard search it into the hand, then Pendulum Summon with it from the hand to Pendulum Summon one from the deck. So the idea is that each one of these has its own counterparts, not that you should need to go through free harmonizers at all, but you're not able to Pendulum Summon it from the extra deck and you're not adding it back to your hand. So it's something to keep in mind, but like I said, if you want to be playing the Bias Steals, if you have access to the Fenrirs, these are six cards you can quite easily take out and change up. Uh, the other normal summon of the deck, of course, is Double Skullcrabat. And for the other performer powers, we are playing the one Synchro and the one Monkey Board. All pretty straightforward and simple on these ones. You should have seen the combo by now. I re will redo it at the end as well. So you can see the combo between these two. Because it's absolutely insane. Very nice synergy to get you into either a level 8 Synchro or, of course, a level 10. The last two pendulums we play is the one um, Archerina Centric and the one Sloth. Now, again... Sloth can be taken out completely if you want to. The reason it's so good is your end board is going to involve spheres, and then you tribute off the spheres. You bring out sloth, and it completely locks everything down. And then you go to your main, uh, you go to your turn, your second turn, and you get to push for an OTK. I've kept the eccentric in here as it's just a really nice card that can be spot removal for either front row or back row. So especially when you've got stuff like Defissure running around, and you've also got um, other cards that might cause you a bit of an issue, uh, eccentric can be one of those ways to out it. So can Purple Poison as well. Moving on to the spell cards, we are playing double, triple tactics alongside the single Sky Iris, Necro Valley, um, Secret Village, and Set Rotation. Now, Set Rotation is a way to kind of try and play around and even your match, because if you Set Rotation and give your opponent one of these, they can't really do anything with it, and they're not going to want to flip the Secret Village. So the idea is that your Iris is your extender. This gives you to your Revolution Dragon. Your Necro Valley is for the matchup against... Um, Tier Ishizu, and then of course the Secret Village is against any other matchup that doesn't play a spell cast and plays a lot of spells, so Flunderies, basically. Uh, and the idea behind this is not only can Set Rotation interrupt the Magnificent map from Flunders, but you've kind of got all of the bases covered. If your opponent is playing Tier Elements, then you want to obviously Set Rotation, give this to yourself, give that to them. They're not going to be able to activate this, because once they do, unless they put a spell cast on the board, they're not going to be able to re-play uh, their field spell or anything like that. If you are not against tier elements, then you can actually quite happily give your opponent a Necro Valley because you really do not care about moving stuff from the graveyard, apart from your Revolution Dragon, which you should have already resolved and got to where you need to get to. So you're basically covering all the bases that you need. Um, Skyrus, is, of course, will provide you with some protection as well. But sadly, it doesn't protect your Draco Slayers. You can play the Draco Slayer Field Spell as well if you want to. That is entirely up to you. I just kind of wanted to get the balance right. So you've kind of got those options uh, going first, going second, and going against the Rogue matchups as well. Moving on to the extra deck, we'll start off with our uh, Draco Slayer cards that we are playing. So we are playing two Ignister. Um, Prominence, such a cool card. Really, really like this. The fact it is not a hard once per turn is mental. And now because we have more Draco Slayer targets, it can actually summon more from the deck. So really, really cool card. Works a tree and non-target shuffling back as well. You've then, of course, got the Magister Paladin. So this is the XYZ counterpart. It will search you a Pendulum Monster in the end phase, so do not forget, because that activates on Summon and then resolve at the end of the turn. So make sure you know that you've uh, used this because you're not going to be leaving it on the board. You also have the ability to detach a material to special on a face-up Draco Slayer Pendulum Monster from your extra deck. It can't be used as XYZ material. Now keep this in mind, because this is how you can get a bit of a, um, not a game loss, but a warning, 
is the monster that this one summons can't be used as XYZ, the monster this one summons can't be used as Synchro, and the monster that this one summons cannot be used as Fusion. So it kind of gives you small mini locks, but this is all before Link summoning, so you have nothing to worry about as long as you keep that in mind. Then sadly, the only one that didn't get an RB, which I really wish it did, um, the power is such a cool card as well. So it must be special summoned from the extra deck by fusing the above materials or tributing the above cards. A Draco Slayer, like a Pendulum Monster, and a Pendulum Monster. You do not use Pulmerization. Pendulum Monster cards in your Monster Zones and Pendulum Zones cannot be destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect. Once per turn, you get to special on a Draco Slayer, like a Pendulum Monster from your hand or graveyard, but it can't be used as fusion materials. So you can kind of see how powerful these four are. Moving on to the generic synchros, we've got the one uh, tilting in, uh, entrainment. This card's actually insane in pendulums. So again, if you've been looking up Draco Slayer profiles, you should know exactly what this card does by now. But if it is synchro summoned, you get to special on a level four or lower pendulum monster from your hand or face up from the extra deck. At the end of the damage deck, when this card in your pendulum, uh, sorry, while this card or your pendulum monster uh, battles an opponent's monster, but the opponent's monster was not destroyed by battle, you can destroy that opponent's monster. So basically you get to attack and then kill off a boss monster if you need to. It's very rare this is going to stay on the board because you are then going to be using it as synchro material to kind of sync up into your level 10s. We've got the one Borrowload Savage Dragon, and then of course for the 10s we've got the Soul Sovereign and the Baron de Fleur. So you've got the Aggressor and Defender. Now, I know I've tried to avoid buy steals and I've tried to avoid um, the Fenrir's, but I've still put a Baron in here. If you do not have access to Baron, your next best alternative, in my opinion, would be a Nirvana High Paladin. It works just as well. Obviously, it doesn't give you the Omni Negate, so it would be a more aggressor than a Defender. So its better replacement would be for the Sovereign. But I know Baron is like £75, and this is probably like a fraction of that, if at most. Alternative other options that you do have is you can play Scarlight for an option to win in time. You've got Cowboy as well for an option to win in time. You've also got Baguska. Um, but because we're going through our level 8s more consistent, consistently because we are playing the Magicians, uh, that's why we're rocking the four level 8 Synchros. We're going to play the one main deck um, XYZ that isn't a Draco Slayer, and that is, of course, Abyss Dweller. Just because in a Shizu tier matchup, if you know you're facing it, making Abyss Dweller pretty much gives you the game, uh, game one. Moving on to our Link Monsters, we play a lot of Link 2s, or a lot, I say we've got 3s, so we've got Spheres, so this is one of the end combo pieces, because you use Dra um, Ignista plus one of your um, other Dragon Monsters to make this, and then this will summon out Sloth during your opponent's turn. You've then got IP Mascarina and Beyond the Pendulum. Such a cool card for the deck, obviously, um, Electromite would be better, but we're rocking it with what we've got. We've then got the one Selene Queen, and then we've got Appalooza as a defender. You can play Axis Code as an aggressor. And then finally, the World Sea Dragon Zelantis. And I know a lot of you are like, what, why? Well, this can actually banish the Fusion and the Synchro, bring them both back, which is why Zelantis is so important, because you can actually use it uh, turn one and turn two, should you need to. But like I've said, an upgrade to an Axis Code Talker is well and truly on the cards, especially if you get rid of the Baron de Fleur. But as you can see, we've got, we've got a nice balance here. We've got Extender, Defender, uh, Aggressor, Defender. So that's the way I've kind of looked at these, um, is you're kind of balancing everything out. So you've got a Defender and a bit of an Aggressor there. Obviously, your Max Aggressor would be Access Code Talker. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for the profile. I'm now going to show you the insanely cool two-card combo. So stick with us. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, now to show you the two car combo. Now you do specifically need these guys right here, um, but don't forget you do not actually need to use your normal sign throughout the rest of this combo. So if you do need to get into Majesty, you do have the normal sign of Bambuku. And if you play Reinforcing Army, you've got extra ways of getting to this guy right here. So you're gonna scale these, you're gonna activate the Majesty's effect. The Majesty effect will allow you to search out another Draco Slayer, as long as it is not Ignis or herself. And you're gonna go for the Power Load Knight. You'll then use her secondary effect to pop one card in the scale, being popping the Ignis. This will trigger the Ignis to special on one from the deck, um, so that is going to allow you to pretty much get anything out that you want. So we're going to go for Luster. It specifically wants to be like an effect monster, but I'll show you how you can adapt this as you go. You then scale the Dynamite Knight, use the effect to special summon out the Majesty. Now, if you have a card in hand, you can use Majesty's Effect now, but if you actually wait and use it later on in the combo, it means you don't need that additional card, which is really, really cool. So you're gonna sync these two together. They're gonna to go into, of course, our one and only Mac Daddy, Ignister. We're then gonna use Ignister's Effect to special on from the deck. Now, you need to make sure you special on an Effect Monster, because if you don't, you will not be able to get into um, 
the Beyond the Pendulum. So pretty much summon out anything you want. I'm going to go for a second Ignis. And then what we're going to do is we're going to link these two together. So Ignis goes to the extra deck, and then uh, Ignista will go to the graveyard. You then go for Beyond the Pendulum, use Beyond the Pendulum's effect, and this will search you out Monkey Board. Now, keep in mind that your scales are negated until you Pendulum Summon, meaning that Monkey Board will remain a 1. So, this is where it gets really fun, because you're going to Pendulum Summon 2. So, we're going to go for a Majesty, and we'll go for whatever one you summon out, you want to basically be putting into the graveyard. Uh, so, let's leave Majesty, actually. Let's go with da Double Ignis. Double Ignis does fine. And then you're going to overlay both of these, and you're going to go into the Majesty, um, Majesty, and then what you want to do here, now that your Monkey Board is now live, this is where you maximise your value, is you use Monkey Board's effect, this will allow you to search you out the Performer Power Odd Eyes before you activate. Now keep in mind, you do activate this effect when it is summoned, so remember to make a note, or make sure you know that during the end phase you get to search a Pendulum Monster. Then what you want to do here, is you want to detach from this one and you will special summon the Majesty from the extra deck. This will then trigger Majesty's effect to discard the um, Odd Eyes and this will allow you to search yourself out a Sky Iris. Now it's very important that you activate the Sky Iris or the Field Spell you search, like if you were to go for Secret Village, you can do of course. Uh, so you activate the Field Spell to make sure you've got one, two and three. Then what you want to do is you want to link the XYZ with the material and the link, go into the graveyard to go into Selene. Put Selene on the far left. Uh, you'll then be able to use Selene's effect, which will have three counters on it, and this is going to allow you to summon back from the hand or the graveyard. And we're going to go from the graveyard, the Odd Eyes Synchron. So this will summon back on the summon of this. The Synchron will trigger to target the Monkey Board and summon itself out as well. Now use these two here to sync into a level eight, and you're going to go into your Choo Choo Entainment. Uh, you'll trigger Entainment's effect to summon back the Odd Eyes Synchron. Now keep in mind when this is used as Synchro material special from the extra deck, it will get banished. So you're going to sync these together, this will go to the graveyard, this will get banished, and you're going to summon out your Baron de Fleur, protecting everything you need to, which is why it gets so important. Now it's the time to activate Iris, you're going to use Iris' effect to pop the Dynamite Knight, this will go into the extra deck, and then you're going to use the Iris to search you out a Revolution Dragon. Now this is where Revolution Dragon really comes into its own, because you can scale it, um, and then you get to... Destroy it, and if you do, special summon a target. So you target a Dragon Fusion Synchro or XYZ in your graveyard. So, scale this, affect this, destroy this, summon back. Ignister! Now, it's at this point as well, it's really important. This is like one of the two times where it's, it's specific of what you summon. Ignister will summon out the Dynamite from the deck. You're then going to tribute these two together to fuse into the Dynamite Knight. And again, very, very important on that one that you tribute, because by tributing, you will also trigger the Dynamite Knight effect, which will allow you to add the Majesty Pegasus back to the hand, so you get to regain a little bit of resource. You'll then use the Dynamite Knight's effect to bring back the Ignis from the graveyard that was there um, from, or one of the materials from the Majesty, as long as you bring one back, it doesn't really matter. You'll then uh, link these two together. This one will go into the extra deck, and you're going to go into... Zalantis, there we go. Zalantis effect will then trigger, or you will be able to trigger the effect to banish all of these and reset the board state. Now, the reason you do this is it will reset the Ignis effect. I believe it will also as well reset um, the effect of the Dynamite power. So you've got more plays to make further on down the line. So you're gonna activate Ignista. Ignista can pretty much, again, summon out anything it wants. It really doesn't matter. But you're gonna be ideally going for a dragon. And the reason you go for a dragon is so that you can get into spheres. So this is probably where you bring out the master um, pendulum. So then put this one into the extra deck and you'll put that into the graveyard. And this will now give you spheres because you used two dragon monsters. Let's put it over this side so that we've got a free zone. Now, because we haven't conducted our normal summon in this phase, you can activate the Dynamite Knight effect to bring back your Ignis, and then your normal summon your Majesty, and then these can become an IP Mascarina, or depending on the matchup, if you are playing against um, a tier element, it can also become an Abyss Dweller. So now what you've got is a very powerful board that will pretty much give you everything you need. If you really wanted to, um, as long as you'll bring about a Draco Sir Pendulum Monster. So what we can do here is we'll now move to the end phase, we'll resolve all of this and we can search out either a scale that we might need, a Bambuku for a follow up, um, you can pretty much go for anything you want, I'm probably going to go for 
Uh, either Joker or Bambuku. So I'm going to go with Bambuku just to kind of reset everything and go again. So then what we're going to be able to do here is you're going to put to your opponent's turn. Let's say we activate Duello. That puts an Ignis or Majesty into the Grey or whichever one you want. Uh, and then you'll be able to use Spheres Effect. Spheres will Tribute, bounce a card, and then summon from the deck the Almighty Sloth. So then Sloth will come down. Neither player can special from the extra deck except Amorph Ages. So unless your opponent is playing Amorph Ages, nothing's going to happen there. Uh, you've got the follow-up of this, plus you still would have had three more cards in your hand as well. So you're pretty much stacked to go. And then all you need to do is go to your turn, switch these into tap mode. Uh, they haven't been able to special from the extra deck, and <laughs> done. That is pretty much game over. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this combo. I hope it's kind of shown you a, the very base of this deck. This is what I love about this deck. It's really, really fun. And it has a lot of options and alternative routes as well. This is just the ideal scenario, uh, which is really, really cool. And it's nice to kind of, you know, the Draco Slayers aren't exactly massively expensive. So unless you really want to be pumping the money into it, if you already have Bambukus from previous Pendulum projects, um, unless you want to be playing the Magnemutes and the uh, Fenrirs, which you really can do on a high competitive level, there is no need to splash the cash at the highest possible levels in order to do this, unless you want to get these ulties because they are BEA beautiful. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Till next time, guys, as absolutely always, stay safe and, of course, happy dueling.